get walk on parts. I'm a struggling actress. I only get walk on parts too. I'm a struggling stuntman. Mine are the parts they walk on. <laughs> In future, I'm only going to eat homegrown food. In future, I'm only going to drink homemade wine. <laughs> In future, I'm only going to eat things I've reared myself. Sorry, kids. <laughs> I'm going out with a married woman. If I ring her and a man answers, I put the phone down. I'm going out with a married man. If I ring him and a woman answers, I put the phone down. I'm a shareholder in British Telecom. Thanks to these two, I'm making a fortune. <laughs> Pump number four, please. That's six pound forty, please. Good. Will you take a check? Yes, we got a check card. Yes, there it is. Car number. XYJ four four two T. Address. Sixteen Rosehip Road, Ewell. Fingerprints. <laughs> Chest x rays. <laughs> Chest x rays, yes. Marriage certificate. Yes, yes. <laughs> Windsor Safari Park sticker. <laughs> yes, there it is. Noddy dog. Yes. Fluffy dice. Yes, <laughs> Criminal record. Oh, I'm sorry, I haven't got it with me. Oh, well, have you got any other means of identification? I've got a mole on my shoulder and a, a scar on me in a left thigh. Have you looked? Mm -hmm. Can I have a look? Because we can never be too sure. Come on, get them off. <laughs> Lost in the vastness of space. Put us on visual, Lieutenant. On visual, Captain. I still can't make out where in the universe we are. Magnification by 10. Magnification by 10, Captain. That's still not clear. Magnification by 100. Magnification by 100, Captain. Still can't make it out. Magnification by 1,000. Magnification by 1,000, Captain. <laughs> You know, I hate people calling me Quasimodo. It really gets my back off. <laughs> Morning, Copperfield. Sir! Lovely day, Copperfield. Sir! Springs in the air. Sir! <laughs> Good morning, Scrungier. Well, have you ever had trouble with cats digging up your garden? Well, I know I has, and I tried everything. Pepper, bulldogs, the lot. And they kept coming back to the same part. So you know what I did? I concreted it over. <laughs> digging that, I thought. But I didn't reckon on how persistent they was. There <laughs> it goes again. <laughs> ah, that usually fixes them. Only problem is, they keeps collecting them boots till they get a pair. Then they take them down the Oxfam shop to buy petrol for the generator. <laughs> I love you, Jim. I love you, Margaret. Will you marry me, Jim? No. Why not? Marriage is a constriction, Margaret. A baited hook to snare the less individualistic units in a totalitarian society. A comprehensively uniformizing coupling designed more to the petty moralism of outmoded philosophies than the inherent and primarily relevant needs of the aforementioned units, eradicating the initial splendor of intercorrelationship <laughs> in a veritable flood of ultimately terminal intimacy. But, Jim, I'm pregnant. Oh, well, that's different. <laughs> Mr. Kirk, just 
do you know, I'll have to do something with these here. <laughs> It's a big hello here from Moira McBitch. And now the answers to last week's quiz. Let's see how many you got right. The answer to the first question was in three parts. The coronation Scott, the train driver's daughter, and not while standing in a station, unless it's all just shot. <laughs> the second question was the maths question, remember? And the answer was, two and a half men would take longer to bury because they'd have to bury the other half. I don't understand that, Bruce. I really do. <laughs> Question number three. The odd one out was Francis de la Tour. All the rest have had nose jobs. <laughs> Question number four. No. <laughs> Question number five. This is obviously far too easy because you all got this one right. You were asked what had the following a Scotsman, a Greek soldier, a nude bather, and Sooty all got in common? And the answer, of course, you all got it right. They don't like cold hands. <laughs> well, now to next week's quiz. This is a limerick competition, and we want you to complete the following limerick. There was an old man called Buck. Answers, please. <laughs> On a postcard. To Dr. Angus McTroon, the bird sanctuary, Isle of Skye, Scotland, has nothing to do with the BBC, but it does like receiving postcards. <laughs> No, don't tell him. Don't know why we bothered renting it. I'm going to see what's up wireless. We now go over to the Minister of Defence for a very important announcement. It is with very great regret that I have to inform you that the Russians have declared war on Great Britain. At this very moment, Russian nuclear missiles are heading towards us and will arrive in four minutes. Until then, some music. <laughs> Flaming Nora! What shall we do? Four minutes. That's all we've got. Well, what are we going to do? We can have a game of drafts if we quit. Oh, don't be daft. It's no time for your stupid jokes. Ah, you're eat, lass. Hey. If it's gonna happen, that's it. But there's one thing. I've got to clear my conscience. You see, during our marriage, love, there's been other women. Yeah. Oh, Dave. First with that barmaid from Clog and Pump. <laughs> then with your sister, Bertha. Then there were Ethel from Corner Chippy. An old lady's section of Uddersfax Brass Band. Look, I'll have to forgive you, love. You see, I've been unfaithful too. They last never. Oh, yeah, I mean, there were the milkman, the postman, the man that read gas meter, Cleck Eaton and District Pigeon Fanciers Club. No, oh, I. Old Trooper Boy Scouts in Bobber Job Week. <laughs> oh, can you ever forgive me? Well, it's going to be curtains for us in a minute, so I. I forgive you, lass. Oh, I forgive you too, Dave. <laughs> this was episode one of our new serial, When the Bomb Drops. <laughs> you dirty old rotten rat bag. Clock it, you district pigeon fanciers club, eh? You monkey minded middle little. Oh, what's it? I'll give you a big apple for a chip, eh? <laughs> I'm Eddie Luca, just an ordinary bloke who happens to own an airline. How did I get where I am today? That's right, Glory. I am what I am today because by cutting corners, I give the public what it wants. Low Scots fight, uh, light slot cots, lost flow kites, snow frost bites. Low cost flights. Yes, and that as well. Flying with Luca Airlines gives you five great bonuses. You guarantee you can do fully comprehensive insurance to cover any medical costs, to notify next of kin, and to pay transportation costs of returning personal effects, etc., to your country of origin. And that's not all. We also offer you. Stand by. I am standing by. No, that's what we also offer them. Oh, yes. Stand by. 
Book with Luca and you can book with confidence. A Luca flight takes off from London to the States every 45 minutes. There goes one now. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never fly with anyone else again. <laughs> I'm honest, Joe. I'm always honest. I'm lucky, Lucy. I'm always lucky. I'm Flash Harry. I'm always being arrested. <laughs> My business is doing so well, I've started an expansion program. My business is doing so well, I've started a number of takeover bids. My business is falling apart. I've started a fire. <laughs> On top. But it's not firm down. There is no need. <laughs> I don't think we can hold out much longer, Captain. Hang on in there, Lieutenant. Do you think we'll ever make it, Captain? They can't keep this pressure up. They'll have to break soon. Sergeant Pavano was bursting. Captain first. Turkey. Roast pork. Chicken. Roast beef. Darling. Brussels sprites. Asparagus. Darling. New potatoes. What's all this in aid of? What do you want? Old roast potatoes. Do you want me to redecorate the bedroom? No. Broccoli. Apple pie. Do you want me to redecorate the kitchen? Positively not. Gooseberry fool. Well, <laughs> ice cream. Do you want me to convert the loft? No, darling. But no. what is it? What do you want me to do? Buy me a new freezer. The old ones can't guide. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, darling. Oh, darling, how thoughtful. A dozen red noses. <laughs> yes. How long does it take to flight to Spain? Just a minute. Oh, it does it. Thank you. <laughs> well, there we are. Just look at these wonderful specimens. <laughs> I'll name that tune in one. <laughs> Give me a status report, Scotty. Captain, I can't do any more. I just got to Can you give me that again with subtitles, please, Lieutenant? I can't do any more. I just got to We interrupt this program to bring you a bulletin. <laughs> Excuse me while I get the bullet out. <laughs> Lieutenant Uhuru. Yes, Captain. Tell me, why do they call you Uhuru? Well, Captain, when I was a baby, the vicar who christened me had a jippy tummy and he said, I named this child Uhuru. I didn't know this program was on today. It's not. That's my new video recorder. I wonder what it was. Good, in it? Mm. This is my favorite film, this. I watched it ten times yesterday, four times the day before that. Really? Yeah, I watched it five times today. Don't you get a bit fed up with it? Well, it makes a change from ordinary TV, doesn't it? What do you mean? Well, all you get on that ordinary TV is repeats. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a kiss. No! No! Give us a kiss, no, I say! No! Quick! Give us a kiss! No. Before the beast gets here. <laughs> Give me a visual on the scam, Zulu. Who you got in Zulu? <laughs> my children, my beloved children, for all the gardeners in the congregation. Let me say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord! You see, my children, 
For all you women in the audience, let me hear you say amen. amen. For all you men, let me hear you say a woman. Amen. For all those of you who believe in equal rights, let me hear you say a person. Amen. There are among you, my children, let me hear you say yeah. yeah. There are among you believers and there are among you septics. <laughs> the believers will be bathed in glory. The septics will be bathed in TCP. <laughs> let me hear you say yeah. yeah. You see, my children, we are gathered here today for peace and quiet. I've got a little peace, and I hope to God she keeps quiet. <laughs> Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So put your hands together, my children, and pray hard. We pray for something special here right now. Let's pray really, really hard. Let's pray. Let's, hallelujah, my prayers have been answered. <laughs> Because it says in the good book, we shall go forth and multiply. And that's what I want to do with you, my darling. Multiply. <laughs> and to those of you who need to be reminded of the seven deadly sins, there are illustrated pamphlets for 50p on sale at the back of the church. <laughs> and now, my children, let me see you say, hallelujah. <laughs> lift up your hearts. If you can't lift up your hearts, lift up your kidneys or your leg or your right foot or something. <laughs> and join with me in singing spiritual 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 sing spiritual 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 sing spiritual last verse spiritual Spiritual. One more time. Spiritual. Okay, two more times. Spiritual. Okay, maybe one more time. Spiritual. All right, just one more time. Spiritual. Spiritual. Let me say amen. Amen. Let me say clear off. Clear off. All right, I'm going. <laughs> Good to have you back, John. Oh, gee, thanks, yeah. How do you feel after your illness? Terrific. I needed a horse. It must have been terrible having that thing on your face. <laughs> yeah, it was like, you know... Are you okay? <laughs> Hold him down! Hold him down! What's going on? Oh, my God! What are you doing? Say goodbye to City. Bye-bye, City. No wrinkles on my brow Congratulations in my ear And I climb on the stage somehow But I was one of the young ones Extremely polite When I was traveling right But now that I'm one of the old ones I'm nearly ancient now Just <laughs> that wiggle to that old rock and roll Where I can still get Once in a while I put on my dancing shoes But I take it much slower now Well, I know how to move And I can dance on the beach Without cracking up at the knees But now that I'm one of the old ones I'm nearly ancient now
Bueno. Evening, Sim. Part the usual, please. Yeah, what's that? It's a lie detector. Get off. That's right. I'm fed up with listening to all that old ball that keeps going on over there. <laughs> hey, well, I've heard of some things in pubs, but a lie detector? <laughs> oh, I'm going to need this. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps I won't, really. <laughs> Hey, I can't wait to try this out on Harry. <laughs> Hello, Albert. Hi, I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> the latest thing in pubs, a lie detector. What made it buzz? It's you saying you're sorry. Well, I've had an hard day. <laughs> <laughs> well, a fairly busy day. <laughs> well, look, it was half past six when I left the office. <laughs> golf course. <laughs> hey, I don't know what you see in that golf, you know. I prefer something a lot more relaxing. There's nothing I like better than going down to the canal with my fishing rods. <laughs> <laughs> with that big redhead from the typing pool. <laughs> You're not still seeing her, are you? Why not? She's a very nice girl. <laughs> All right, she's a raving nymphomaniac. <laughs> oh, do you want a drink? That's nice of you. <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. Oh. What do you want? I'll have half a bit yet. You'd like a pint, please, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> Is your missus at the bingo, then? Yeah. <laughs> well, she will be when she's finished mucking out pigeons. <laughs> Harry, Albert, do you know my missus? No, never. <laughs> I'm a train driver. Come the weekend, I like to forget work and take my lad to the football. I'm a biscuit packer. I like to forget about work at the weekend and go dancing. I work at British Leyland. I do something completely different at weekends. I work on my car. <laughs> I've always loved cats, and at last I've realised my life's ambition. I've always loved dogs, and at last I've realised my life's ambition. I've always loved lemmings, and I'm just about to realise my life's ambition. I went to a psychiatrist because I had personal problems. I soon fell in with his ideas. I went to a psychiatrist with a smoking problem. I soon fell to five cigarettes a day. I went to a psychiatrist with a drinking problem. I fell off the couch. <laughs> I bet you five pounds mm. I can pop them three balls with one shot. Five pounds. Five pounds. Right, you're on. There's mine. There's mine. Go on. One. your surgeon this morning and I don't want you to worry about a thing. Now this injection makes a man carefree, happy, slightly woozy, irresponsible, as if he's had a dozen whiskies. That's it. Now. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> nurse. Hey, uh, love. What? That space invader's not working. Are you? Come on, you're not paid to sit around. Do a bit of work. Come on. <laughs> So Little Red Riding Hood set off to see Grandmother. She walked through the new shopping precinct until she came to the big roundabout complex in the Six Lane Relief Road. She went down the steps and through the underpass. It was very dark. The lights had been vandalised and there was rude graffiti all over the walls. Red Riding Hood wasn't afraid. She'd taken Kung Fu at evening class and in her basket she had a tear gas canister in case she met any nasty muggers. Soon she arrived at Grandmother's council flat. She took the key off the piece of string behind the letterbox and went in. Grandma, she called out, I've brought your favourite supper. Sweet and sour prawn balls and a bag of chips. <laughs> I'm in the bedroom, said a voice. The electric fire was on and Grandmother was tucked up in bed. She'd read about hypothermia and wasn't taking any chances. <laughs> but it was really the wolf, remember? Oh, Grandma, what big ears you have, said Red Riding Hood. Pardon, said the wolf. Mummy, shh. Oh, Grandma, what big eyes you have, said Red Riding Hood. Mummy! It's these national health lenses, 
said the wolf. Mummy! Oh, what's the matter? What is it? What's a wolf? <laughs> and when was it that you first decided to go to this hell farm? <laughs> And now, an interview with that famous motorbike rider, Barry Sheen. Bert. Oh. Grease. <laughs> Blood. Oh. <laughs> Even understains. Protect. <laughs> um, what's on the other side? Don't know. I think it's the milkman. <laughs> Gee, honey, are we lost? Don't worry, baby. I'll find out where we are. I'll call someone up on the CB. <clears throat> uh, break it, 24. This here's Blue Movie, Lost in Space. Looking for a 1020. Got your ears on, good buddy? Come on. 10 4 Blue Movie. This here's the cold turkey. I got him on you wall to wall. 10 15 two wheeler smoky convention. So found, little buddy. 10 77. I'm ahead of 10 100. So drop the hammer. 73 and 88 to you. 10 4, we down. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, 10 4. <laughs> what did he say? He said, uh, ask a cop. <laughs> Yeah. It's a boy. Oh, great. Seven pounds. Seven pounds. <laughs> Here's ten. Get the chair. Good morning, friends. <laughs> here I am rummaging around amongst all this lovely fauna and flora, and I'm here with one of the most ferocious of creatures, the lowland gorilla. As you can see, the gorilla is one of the most gentle and sensitive creatures on Earth. The secret is to be as one of them and to let them see that you come in peace bearing them no ill will. Because like everyone else, all they want is the chance to bring up their young to get eight O levels, just as their human cousins. <laughs> How can I be so close to such terrifying creatures I hear you ask yourselves? Well, I've studied their living habits closely and I know how to fit in precisely with the little daily rituals which mean so much to the adult gorilla. <laughs> This is one of their more advanced rituals. Thank you very much. <laughs> However, after tea, we do hope to see a much more familiar activity. There you go. Now we shall see the traditional grooming ceremony so well known of all primates. <laughs> He's trying to communicate with me now. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll try a few words of my gorilla language on him. Just watch this. Gwan, gwan, gwal, gwan. appear to be on the verge of a way through. <laughs> I'm now engaged to his oldest daughter. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, I've got some good news and some bad news. First, the bad news. You're dead. What's the good news? Pardon? What's the good news? The price of ivory's gone up. <laughs> Serve the fish first. But, madam... The fish? Serve the fish first, madam. Very well. Thanks very much, Doc. All right. Uh, I understand that some viewers have lost colour. We apologise for this, and we're doing our best to restore colour transmission to you. Now, Cyclone Sid is going for the uh, light black ball on the left. And we'll try to bring the white back past the light grey ball and in behind the slightly darker grey one. But you must watch out for the off-pale grey one at the top 
if he's going to be set up for the murky looking shadowy ball. Ah, yes, colour has been restored. And as I was saying before, Cyclone Sid is going for the light black ball on the left. It's not been the white one. Planter Wexley's best better. <laughs> Oi, you out. I've told you before, you are not a Wexley's man. Yeah, but look, I've been practicing my Wexley stance, my best bitter bit and all Out! That. You see, pal, we are Wexley's bitter men. We are construction workers, lumberjacks, hang gliders. What's your job? Assistant sanitary inspector. <laughs> well, be fair, lads. Come on now. Look, I've changed my job. I'll be a stuntman. I'll join the Red Arrows tomorrow. That's good enough for us. Darling, give this Wexley's bitter man a pint of Wexley's best bitter. Can you put a drop of lime in that, please? <laughs> And welcome to Australian Blue Peter. Today I'll be showing you how you can get smashed out of your brain on two quid in a Liverpool wine lodge. I'll be showing you how we can get rid of fleas on our two dogs, Trevor and Riley. If we can get the little mangles apart. We'll also have some more film of our Blue Peter holiday in Germany. And you'll be able to see here the two boys here picked up a nasty disease during a night on the Reaper van. German measles. But firstly, news of the Blue Peter appeal. As you know, last week we asked you to send us all the empty beer cans you could lay your hands on as we can flog them for cash. It doesn't matter if they're full. I can soon empty them. And the news is good, as you can see from our target. Yeah. We've already reached a level of $20,000. This means that next summer we'll have a total of 464 permanently smashed Aussies making life hell for tourists on campsites throughout Europe. Yeah. <laughs> if we can just keep going at the present rate, we'll be able to take over the entire Munich Beer Festival and still have enough Aussies left over to fill a Spanish jail. So keep the cans rolling in. <laughs> That's the spirit, Rob. Yeah, legless again. But now, on to something else. With the party season approaching, you'll probably be getting bombed out of your mind quite often. Yeah. So with Gary's help, we're going to show you how to pass out at a party without upsetting anyone. The first one Gary's going to demonstrate is the old dead leg. This is caused by drinking a mixture like this one. Red wine and green chartreuse. <laughs> 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 now that although all sense of feeling in the legs is completely gone, the arms can still be used to drag yourself under the nearest table. But today, he's going to demonstrate the last method, the pack of cards. Yeah. <laughs> you know me, old son? This is seen frequently in the bar of the Sydney Opera House. Usually when a guy's had 12 pints, and is dancing on a table, some joker bets him he can't down a pint of Greek brandy in 20 seconds. This is the result. <laughs> Next week, I'll be telling you where to get the cheapest methylated spirits in London. And we found a little place where they serve it ice cold. And I'll be showing you how to build a city out of 8 million beer cans. In fact, the Poms have done it already. They call it Milton Keynes. So, <laughs> Elsewhere. I think I know the one 
I build castles in the air. I'm a bit of an head case. I live in a castle in the air. I'm a psychiatrist. I charge them rent. <laughs> the Times is read by people who run the country. The Guardian is read by people who'd like to run the country. The Sun is read by people who don't care who runs the country, just as long as they've got big knockers. <laughs> It's not Shave Video, it's Shave Video, and it's the name of the restaurant, you know, like a video cassette, you know. Help, video tape recorder. Yeah, like that. Can I help you, sir? <laughs> yes, please. Uh... Yes, sir. I am the waiter. Go away, you're a television set. <laughs> well, what's all this, then? Is it uh, some sort of new gimmick, or what? Exactly, sir. One has to keep up with the times, hasn't one? As a matter of interest, you might like to know that our chef this evening is, in fact, a computer. <laughs> sir? Yes. Normally, we have a robot, but he eloped last week with a microwave oven. That's <laughs> great. I suppose we'd better uh, order them. What do you think? Uh, what do you fancy, Donna Marie? Oh, well, um, television chip sounds nice. Um, oh, excuse me. What's vertical hold broth? A soup with a straw, miss. <laughs> uh, can I have a bit of this uh, video veal, please? Certainly. Sir, madam. Thank you. One cell fish and chips, one video reel coming up. I want to be ours. Hey, I'll tell you one thing about this place. They're very quick. Hang on a minute. It's not as it's telling, look. It's a telling. What are we supposed to do? Hang on a minute. Gascon, waiter. Anything wrong? It's this food. It's inedible. Well, let's see, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> I demand to see the gaffer. He was arrested two days ago for working without a TV license. Well, I can assure you, pal, as soon as I get home, I'm going to write a letter of complaint to the owner of this restaurant. You tell him, Derek. I'm telling him, Donna Marie. Donna Marie, I'm telling him, shut up. Sorry. I've never had such disgusting service before. I'm certainly never going to come here again. You get your mock oslip, we're legging it, and you get us a taxi on your bike. Certainly. Taxi! <laughs> Where you go? <laughs> But again, shall we? Ready and. A is for arson or burning and bright. B is for burglars who do it at night. C is for coppers chasing our car. And D is for Dartmoor, because that's where we are. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, we're only here to paint the surgery. <laughs> and here tonight to answer questions, the president of the London Taxi Drivers Association. <laughs> Did you see that bloody idiot pulled out straight in front of me? I haven't got X-ray eyes, have I? I'm not Superman, have I? Don't you give signals, mate. Get on! <laughs> The Newsies, an everyday story of very clever people. Darling, what is it? What have 
I done to upset you? I mean, is it my inability to assimilate your natural, everyday responses? No. Is it my fear of gestalt? I mean, it's so enmeshed in my subconscious that I end up denying my own pleasure principle. No. Have I offended you with my lack of perception? No. Well, you'll surely not accuse me of creating an identity crisis. No. I'm lost for words. I mean, I know how crucial concept reinforcement within a marriage is, but I can't help sensing an impending crisis. Incongruency of our non-verbal and verbal signals. I mean, is it because you want to move away from the positional family setup here with Tasman and Sack to a more person-centered family, giving you more autonomy in the home? No. Oh, for goodness sake, what is it? <laughs> you don't call me Poopsie Whoopsie anymore. <laughs> I can't remember your face, but your name rings a bell. <laughs> Welcome to the most exciting and interesting event in the Winter Olympics calendar, the ski shooting competition. And the first to shoot is Derek Olesen from Sweden, who is trying to bring down the Frenchman, Emil Chevalier. <laughs> in the last Olympics, Olesen was winged in the leg by Chevalier, so he's looking for his revenge today. Up he goes, nice jump. Has it been hit? He didn't take any evasive action, it's difficult to say. No, he's all right, and Olison will be very disappointed with that miss. But he's got two more shots at another target left. Paul! This time he's going for the Italian, Giovanni Giovanotti. The Swedes hate the Italians even more than French, so Olison will be making a special effort here. Here he goes. And that looks a good shot! Olison looks pleased, yes! Yes, he's done it! He got the eye tie in both legs! And now, a word from an agoraphobia sufferer. Hey, boss. I got a half dozen bottles of whiskey. Hey, I suppose they fell off the back of a lorry. Yeah, they sure did. <laughs> Hold it right there. Hold it right there. Put your hands up and get away from the till. Can I help you, sir? I'll help myself, thank you. Now, move. Just a minute. No talking, I said. Don't say anything. Wait a minute. Yeah, I know. What's your game? You're an Aries, aren't you? You what? When's your birthday? Listen, darling, don't you know what this is? It's a gun, you know what I mean? Bang, bang, shooty, shooty. And it's going to go off right now unless you move. You can't fool me. I know an Aries when I see one. When's your birthday, April? I don't believe it. Go on, I'm interested. Is it April? Yes, it's April the 10th. I knew it. I knew it. Egocentric, impatient, aggressive, always wanting his own way. Am I right? Mm? I don't know. I'm, I'm... <laughs> I'm... Hang on a minute. I'll count to three and then I'll shoot. Oh, see, procrastination. <laughs> Deep down, you're shy and sensitive. Really? Yes. See, you're just seeking attention, right? Mm -hmm. And once people take notice of you, mm -hmm. I mean, all this macho thing, it gives way to something else. What's that? Your warm, glowy sun side comes to the surface. Although you're the ram, right, with mm. big, strong horns, mm -hmm. you're also soft and fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're not nasty at all. No. 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 <laughs> Good evening. This is Fred Dredd. When this government came into power, we promised to defeat inflation. Terrible and wicked inflation caused by the last administration. An economic dual situation. All around us, fists are waving in the air. But what do we care? Because Margaret leads us. She feeds us. She puts up all the prices and she bleeds us. Iron! Let me say to her, I'm afraid the recession is out of hand. So forget what we said. Forget what we planned. Get up, get out, and join a reggae band. Yes, Yes, I'm not coming back till the wets get wetter. So don't give me a ring till things get better. <laughs> the 
Is this the plant bounce? Yeah, it is. You got the ropes and everything? Yeah, look. Are you ready? Sure. Are you sure that there's no one around? No. Okay, let's go. Salt, mustard. <laughs> They're never in when you want them, are they? Hello, my dears. Scrunge here. Now, as you can see, today we're going to talk about getting rid of moles from lawns. Now, the other end of this is connected to the gas supply. Turn it on, Aggie. Right. I'll just have a look, see if I can see any of them. <laughs> it's a bit dark in there. <laughs> Don't see? We're not pushing back the frontiers of horticulture on this program. <laughs> this recorded message. The Samaritan's office is unoccupied at the moment. If you'd like to leave a message, we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Please speak after the tone. Thank you. Oh, God, not again. This is a recorded message. I hope you don't mind me talking so openly, but I... <laughs> Yeah. What's your father do? He's dead. Oh. What did he do before he died? He fell off a roof. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another in the series, Make Up Your Mind. Tonight we have with us Dr. Emil Foyle, one of the country's leading astronomers. Also with us is Mr. Hogg, a well-known <laughs> astrologist. Welcome, gentlemen. The question we ask is, is there life on other planets? First, Dr. Foyle. No. Mr. Hall? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, there you have it. Plenty of food for thought there. Next week, we'll be asking the question, is there really a god? Till then, good night. <laughs> My right ear is completely severed, but doctors sewed it back on. You're very lucky. Pardon? <laughs> now, a word from a claustrophobia sufferer. She's fussy when it comes to food. She insists on catalyzes. She knows when it's feeding time. Well, I swear that if she knew how to use this, she'd do it herself. All right, Pepsi. Mummy's coming. Catalyzes. Ah, it's nutritious nourishment for <laughs> Come in, Pepsi. She loves it. Just loves it. She goes mad for it. Catalyze, the perfect order. Eight out of ten cats said they'd prefer their owners. Headache. Tense, nervous headache. Pain cursing through your cerebellum. Excruciating pain making your life unbearable. Like a javelin going up your right nostril up into your brain. Would you like to stop this headache? Well, stop jiggling your head then, you pillock. I have an Indian doctor. Half an hour after my operation, he taught me how to relax through meditation. I have a West Indian doctor. Half an hour after my operation, he taught me limbo dancing. <laughs> I've got a Chinese doctor. Half an hour after my operation, I felt like another one. <laughs> Since the budget, I've cut my drinking by half. Since the budget, I've given up completely. 
What's the bloody buses? <laughs> This one, you ain't earthly. <laughs> I, I just been in the barn and everything with Miss Allison and that. She's ever so nice. <laughs> How are things? Well, they've said it's touch and go. Touch and go? Yeah. If I touch that nurse again, I go. <laughs> Here we are at the final of the Newsreader of the Year Championship. It's neck and neck at the stage. McDonald sits nervously at 231 points and Angela Lemming at 232 points. So the competition could be sided on a stutter or even a hesitation. We join them on the final round, the foreign news section. McDonald to start. An agreement was signed today by Mr. Ernest Kudunguri, Zingai Mutumbuka, and the Reverend Kanan Banana. <laughs> No, no, no. No, he'll lose points there for that one. Can we have quiet, please? Well, we came here to see a final, and well, a perfect triple name drop. Can he follow it? Let's see. After the meeting, Mrs. Ch 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 Churai... Oh, dear. Oh, now that could lose him the championship. So, at two, four, three points, McDonald has to watch Lemming. Will she stumble? Here goes. Today, floods were reported in Chlanvaya Vecken. Well... I knew Lemon had an ace up his sleeve, but I didn't think it was a Welsh one. So, now with a slight lead. There was a walkout in the council offices of Penmine Mauer, Manith Wine Bauer, and Chlanvi Hangel Eskaiviog. A beautiful triple. <laughs> yes. A beautiful triple. Today, in Chlanamen Dufrin Kairiog, well, so let's see if McDonald can pick up a few points here. There'll be no change in policy, said Mrs. Churai Roponongo and Emerson Munungagwa today. Oh, yes, a nice bit. Too late? No, we'll see. There was still no statement from the powerful Neda Doutzer Herifamir de Kirk today. So, the two, six, three points, anything can happen. Let me settle down now. Sunday football has been sanctioned by the churches in Mein Klochog and Ostrad Gunlice. Sheer poetry. And finally... Yes, this could be the big one. There were train delays today at... I have a feeling. Chlanvar pu gwingich gogera chwindrobu chandosilio gogogoch. Yes! Every inch the winner. Yes, Lenny went for the fluidity of the Welsh language and it paid off. An exciting match and an ecstatic final with a deserving winner. So I'm not happy to say good night.
name the film. Hello there, Prish. I must do something with this makeup. <laughs> I want to tell you a naughty story. break into our show to bring you really big news from your local optician. Yes, now available from all good oculists come Clearview contact lenses. And here to tell us what it's like to wear them comes Wilfred Longbottom from Cowley. Over here, Mr Cowley. Here you go. And it's really marvellous to see you. I just say, it's wonderful to see <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Would you mind accompanying me to the station? Yeah, why not? Okay. A one, two, a one, two, three. <laughs> Go into the station. Go into the station. And tonight we again ask the question: Is there life after death? And to help me answer it, we have with us. Mr. William Spruce. <laughs> Good evening. <coughs> Mr. Spruce, you are a zombie. That's right. <laughs> Would you like to tell us how you came to believe in life after death? Well, <coughs> it all started six years ago when I died. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's all right. <coughs> well, you see, death got to be a bit of a drag after a while. I felt that all the life had gone out of me. I was fed up of hanging around the cemetery playing warts and crosses. <laughs> and that's when you decided to join the living dead? That's right. <coughs> see, they seemed a nice bunch. <coughs> so I decided to join them. And they made me a zombie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> on, my death had no meaning. All the life had gone out of me. And what sort of things do you do now? Well, I... <laughs> well, <coughs> we go out at night and terrorise the community, break into people's homes and eat them. And what are your plans for the future? Well... <laughs> I want to go into journalism. My <laughs> first performance was a contest in Dundee. I came in equal seventh with a
to be a drummer like Buddy Rich, but my problem is lack of rhythm. I wanted to be a guitarist like Eric Clapton, but my problem is lack of coordination. I want to sing like Kate Bush, but my problem is I've never been in enough pain. <laughs> I'm a fireman and my job's fiery. I'm a farm worker and my job's earthy. I'm a sewage worker and my job's uh, not very nice, really. <laughs> I dreamt I was being eaten by a tiger and I woke up in terror. I dreamt I was about to be hanged and I woke up in hysterics. I dreamt I was naked carrying a basket. I woke up in Tesco's. Excuse me. Yes, bar. Uh, could I have a new reversing light bulb, please? Yeah. You doing the job yourself? Well, of course I am. I mean, it's only a light bulb, isn't it? Yeah. You have got a 17-stroke 21A bezel nut spanner, haven't you? I don't think so. You can't do the job without it. Ah, well, I'll take one. There's always something else, isn't there, eh? Yes, isn't there? And a 28-ounce spring tension armature. A, a what? It's all connected man sealed unit. You have to break the line to get to the master pin and adapter. Two of those you want. With the disposable filters, of course. <laughs> hey, I don't need two of all that lot just for a light bulb. Uh, what year's your car? 72. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Oh, thank goodness for that. You need four. <laughs> Is that all? Don't forget to keep a safe distance from the car in front of you. We don't want any accidents now, do we, eh? <laughs> accident? What accident? Well, you see, when you use a race remover clamp, you have to cut through the brake cables. Of course, you could drive slowly. <laughs> <laughs> look, hang on, look. I can't drive without brakes. Very wise, sir. See them there? <laughs> and also... Don't forget your shape-proof washers, caliper unit assembly, bleeder valve, and all the little bleeders that go with them. And also uh, the spring washers, thrust valves, two remote control shaft, uh, camshaft bearing liners, cylinder head stud, and the bolts to go Hang with on, it. Now look, now look. I've nearly got a new car here. Oh, yes, and just one of these. I don't believe it. You always have to replace these after a job like this. What is it? A new reversing light bulb. <laughs> No more fried baked beans for tea. They're awful in the mornings. They should carry government health warnings. <laughs> Hold it right there, Nicole T. <laughs> oh, sorry, kids. Wrong advert. <laughs> Has he gone? Yeah, get the fags out. <laughs> <laughs> Mummy, you got a lie. <laughs> All right, my darlings, I'll cut me throat. I won't ask 20 quid a pay. You can take them off my hands for 10 quid. Lovely pair of flannels. Come on, girls. All right, I'll do you a favour. Seven pound fifty, that's my last offer. Could give them away cheaper. Snap them up. Can't take my with me. No room on the lorry. All right, you see me starve. Three pound a pair for sinking in lower old drown. Two pound fifty, that's my final offer. Yes, love. I won't take ten pairs of two pound fifty. You're not to be twisted behind. Five of the blue, three of the pink, two of the yellow. I'll do you a favour. 20 smackers on the nose. No, 80 smackers on the nose. As seen in folk. All right, all right, all right. I'll tell you what, I'll do you a favour, I'll give you 18 smacks on the nose, that's my final offer. Come again. <laughs> I am the greatest. I'm gonna whoop you on the chin. I'm gonna whoop you in the chest. I'm gonna whoop you in the stomach. I'm the fastest. Ain't nobody ever laid a finger on me. <laughs> he is the greatest. I often go horse riding. Do you? Yes, I think it's because I shake too much. <laughs> <laughs> So you want to be a newscaster, eh? Well, I spent a year with the Afghan Hill Rebels, the Herald Tribune, so I uh, fancy something a bit quieter. <laughs> Fine, right. <laughs> well, you've certainly got the figure for it. <laughs> well, uh, yes, diving for covers, pretty good exercise. Um, then I did uh, two years with The Guardian at Westminster. What are your legs like? <laughs> Pardon? Legs. Legs? Yes, you know, the bit between your feet and your waist. <laughs> well, well, I know what legs are. Fine. Well, I'm sure we could use you as a medical correspondent. <laughs> so, what do they like? Come along. Well, um, oh, they're pretty sturdy, really. Uh, I did a lot of running when I covered Vietnam for the Times, you know, with bullets and... Fine. Well, that knocks the Christmas specials on the head. Um, can you sing? Sing? Yes, you know, it's like talking, but with different notes. Can you do it? Well, um, not per I, I was opera critic for the Observer. Can you dance? To a fashion. Can you ride? 
I could learn if you... Are you, you pregnant? Want... No. Do you want to be... No! Well, good God, woman, what on earth makes you feel that you're qualified to be a newsreader? <laughs> <laughs> well, around this time of the year, when it's nice and sunny, I get played with kids. Footballs keep coming over onto me patch. And five seconds later, they're round. Please, can we have our ball back, mister? Well, I tell you, it gets a real pain in the woodshed. <laughs> I am refusing don't do no good. Most of their mothers is bigger than me. Come to that, so is most of the kids. <laughs> anyway, that's where this comes in handy. Hang on, and I'll demonstrate. Hang on, nippers, and I'll send it back. <laughs> I like playing with children. <laughs> Under my rules, of course. Do you have any hairdo boots? Yes, we do. Oh, Grace, want to be an hairdresser? <laughs> Now, here's a joke for those of you who are listening in Braille. Lump space, lump, lump space, <laughs> lump space. Those of you who are deaf as well. Lump space, lump space, lump, lump space. <laughs> Have you had an organ transplant? <laughs> Can you help me, Doctor? I've got this most enormous boil. Have you tried talking to it, Mr. Smith? It's up to you to put it at ease and make it feel one of the family. Let it lie on a bed of lint if it so desires, but it must not be allowed to hide its light under an elastic cloth. Give it room to breathe. Now let it hold its head up high in public. Introduce it to your friends. Lay an extra place for it at the dinner table. Send it flowers on its birthday. Openly embrace it, saying, Boil, you're swell. <laughs> and that's my boil. Yeah, but listen, Doctor, I've tried all that and it doesn't work. Well, lance it with a cocktail stick, then. <laughs> Lois Lane. Carry on down here, and then it's the third left off park. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, my children, my beloved children, let me hear you say, yeah! Yeah! And today, I'm going to tell you about our roof. We ain't got one. <laughs> My children, I've seen the light. I have seen the light. And whoever left it on, will they switch it off? <laughs> the electricity bill is horrendous. Let me hear you say horrendous. horrendous. My children, let me hear you say yeah. Yeah. I've had the calling. I have had the calling. And whoever is calling me, will they please stop reversing the charges? The telephone bill is horrendous. <laughs> let me hear you say horrendous again. Horrendous. I had a dream that I was on a flight, a long flight, and the plane was going crash. And they said, you're a preacher, do something religious. So I took a collection. <laughs> and he said, yeah. Yeah. I can remember we were so poor that my mother used to paint mouth balls green and tell us they were Brussels sprouts. <laughs> it didn't get rid of our hunger. But it stopped the moth seat in our stomachs. <laughs> Let me hear you say, yeah. Yeah! I can remember my children. We were so poor, but it didn't stop my mother and father coming to church every Sunday and taking the collection. And every Sunday, the preacher would make them bring it back again. <laughs> I can remember. I can remember my father on his deathbed uttering his final words. He said, son, <laughs> I can remember. And so, my children, I want you to reflect about your generosity. As my virgin no knows Moses passes amongst you with the plate and the baseball bat. <laughs> Let me say hallelujah. <laughs> so, my flock, give plenty of money for your preacher and for your church. You see, it's all give and take. You give, and I take. <laughs> and as the collection plate passes amongst you, Sister Martha here has chosen two final hymns. The first hymn she's chosen is hymn 222, 
And the second hymn she has chosen is me. <laughs> Let me hear you say, you lucky blighter. You lucky blighter. Now everyone sing after me. After me. Where were you? <laughs> okay, let's do something you can all sing. Clap your hands. Come on, everybody. Let's do some church tonight. Old time money. Give me that old time money. Give me that old time money. Sir! It's good enough for me. So take what's for religion. Take what's for religion. Take what's for and I booked him. I arrested a car battery salesman and I charged him. I arrested an explosive expert. I let him off. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 10-round catchweight one-man wrestling championship of the world. One for one submission to decide the winner. But this is a real bad guy, good guy contest and here we have the referee strolling up and down impatiently waiting for the match In to begin. the blue corner, it's the Black Wonder. Oh! And in the red corner, it's the golden one. <laughs> now, over here, come on, come on. Now, on a good team fight, no poking, no gouging, no kicking. And when I say break, I want you to break, all right? Oh, Ooh, listen to him. <laughs> all right, now, uh, shake hands and we'll have a good clean fight. Right, ah! bit of cheating. Wait for the bell, wait for the bell. <laughs> Dear corner. And what a great match this is going to be. There goes the bell. And we start this wonderful one-man wrestling competition. And he's got himself at an arm lock. And what a terrible fall. He's on the floor. He's got the golden wonder on the floor. This is a great contest. It's anyone's fight. Look at that. He's got himself in a body press. Do you want to get sick? No! No, no, he didn't want to get sick. And he's starts again. We resume the fighting. Tense cut. And there he goes again. And he's punching himself in the stomach. The referee didn't see that. The referee's not watching this. The first public warning. To the black one. Totally obnoxious personality. Stop fighting him. And they resume fighting. What a great match this is. And he's got himself in an arm lock again. Yeah. There goes this wonderful hobo. I can the name off. And it's a real. And he's got himself again. And just look at this. He's poking himself in the eye. Look at this. He's poking himself in the eye. This is terrible cheating. Terrible cheating here. And he's out of the ring. This could be disastrous for him. He's trying to get up. But he's got himself down. He's up again, he's up again, but he's too good for himself. This is anyone's contest. Oh my goodness, the referee has kicked him in the face. The referee has won. This is surprising. Hello, girls. It's Marty McBitch here. I've been run off my Gucci's today, don't ask. This morning began at a fancy dress charity in aid of the Save the Alligator handbag campaign. We all had to come as our favorite hors d'oeuvres. I went as a stuffed artichoke, of course. <laughs> In the parking lot, I bumped into Rod Stewart dressed as a large portion of tiramisu latter. And Jackie Onassis would come as a lot of Greek bread. <laughs> After a hideous mix-up in the lobby, the three of us went in together as a ratatouille in a basket. <laughs> I spotted Britt Eklund naked except for a cocktail cherry in her navel. Posing as a grapefruit, looking for a man. But girl, she was looking for a man who'd come as a spoon. <laughs> Salad and Nisoir, Victor Lowndes, asked to leave. Threw himself under the chandelier and hung by his anchovies. <laughs> Are we not un petite old for this behavior, Victor? Mm. Afterwards, I whirled off to Plumpy's, London's most exclusive health club. It's so select, they don't take fat people. 
Then, as usual, I met my oldest friend, Margaret Trudeau, having her unsightlies pruned yet again. <laughs> my dears, you could crochet that woman. <laughs> Entrenou Margaret told me that Liz Taylor has had her face sewn back so often she's pointing the other way. <laughs> Then, bomb surprise, who should wobble in but my oldest friend, Joan Collins? <laughs> we waited for a few minutes till her behind arrived. <laughs> then the two of us sat on it and talked yogurt. <laughs> and girls, if you are repelled by the harpoon sequence in Moby Dick, you should have seen my old friend Diana Dawes having acupuncture. <laughs> I then literally leapt out of my jacuzzi. To meet Princess Caroline's laundress, Eva. Eva spent the entire afternoon boasting she'd swallowed one of Bjorn Borg's socks. I don't know how. <laughs> She's nauseating but sweet. Well, my oldest friends, that's all from me. Must fly. But before I do, here's my tip of the week. When it comes to those little nose jobs, remember the holes point downwards. That's <laughs> the lasagna. With my X-ray vision, I could see the harm cigarettes do to your lungs. By the way, I love pink knickers. <laughs> I have seduced many women. In fact, I can count them on the fingers of one hand. Eight. <laughs> Here at the BBC, we never use canned laughter. And just to prove that, I'm going to ask our live studio audience to give us a big round of applause. My girlfriend speaks English, Urdu, Tamil, French, Chinese, Greek, Turkish, Gaelic, German, and Gujarati. Hmm. Is she a, a UN interpreter? No, a school dinner lady in Brixton. <laughs> Yeah, babe? When you take me to these drive-in movies, how come you always park the wrong way round? Yeah. <laughs> 
with a British Leyland employee and I got a faster worker. I crossed a tortoise with a rabbit and got a crusty meat pie. I crossed the road with no trousers on. I got 18 months. <laughs> I caught a bell ringer with my wife. I told him off. <laughs> I caught a watchmaker with my wife. I ticked him off. I caught a telephone operator with my husband. I cut him off. <laughs> I haven't got a phone, but I find the phone box is convenient. I have got a phone, and I find it very convenient. I can't find the convenience. I use a phone box. 